Hello all, welcome back to the YouTube channel The Engineering Survey. Hope you enjoyed my previous video on leveling part 1. In that video we discuss how to measure height difference between two points. In this video I am going to introduce you rise and fall method which is used to find reduced levels. Here we go. Hello all, today we are going to learn the rise and fall method to find reduced levels of given points. Rise and fall method? It sounds good. What are radius levels? A good question. Before that, I will explain the term datum surface and after that, it's possible to explain what radius levels are. Let's see what datum surface is. This is an arbitrary assumed level surface to which the elevation of points may be referred. Now we'll see what the radius level is. Reduce level is known as height or depth of a point above or below the aforementioned datum surface. According to this figure, you can clearly see how the reduce levels have been calculated referred to datum surface of 2 meters from mean sea level. Sir, does this arbitrary datum surface have a correct level or a assumed level? A nice question. It may be an assumed level or a known level referred to mean sea level. If it is a known level, we call it a benchmark. A benchmark? Of course, we'll see. A benchmark is a fixed reference point which is having a known elevation referred to mean sea level. What is the mean sea level? Another good question, we'll see. This is the level at some selected stations on a coast and is the usual datum to which heights are referred. Early days, the mean height of the surface of the sea during a period of 19 years was considered as the mean sea level. Nowadays, the intensity of Earth's gravity field is considered to estimate the mean sea level Therefore, the technologies like GPS are used to determine the mean sea level at a particular point. Wow, interesting. I want to know about GPS. Don't be hurry. Before it comes to GPS, we have a lot of stuff to cover. Now we have already learned all the required definitions. Therefore, let's go to the field and learn rise and fall method. Yay, we are going, going to the field! Ha 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 ha! Let's say that we need to find the radius levels from A to B at 20 meter intervals. We call it longitudinal section from A to B. Then we have to do range in between point A and B. Next we have to mark 20 meter intervals between point A and B. Let's see the helicopter view of line AB to have a better understanding. Here you see AB as a straight line. The points have been marked on the ground by 20 meter intervals. We'll move back to the side view. First we have to get the staff reading at benchmark. It is the first reading we observe from the level instrument. It is known as backside. In this example, it is 2.5 meters. Now we'll see how the recording of these readings are done in the field book. This is the standard sheet which is used to do calculations by rise and fall method. First you need to fill the details such as date, time, observer and recorder. Because it is important to have the records to find the person who is responsible for readings. Now you have to put the backside reading 2.5 meters to the relevant column. Then you have to put the reduce level of it to the reduce level column. Since the backside reading was taken to the benchmark 1, you have to write it in the remarks column. Next, we can hold the staff at point A and get the staff reading of it. It is known as intermediate site. Most of the time, we call it as intersite. The intersite value at A is 1.5 meters. 
From previous lesson, you learned how to calculate the height difference between two points referred to the collimation line. If you deduct considered staff reading 1.5 meters from the previous staff reading 2.5, the answer is 1 meters. Let's formulate it. Change in the height of the ground is equal to previous staff reading minus considered staff reading equals to 2.5 meters minus 1.5 meters. The answer is plus 1. If the answer is positive, that means there is a rise in the ground from benchmark 1 to point A. Now we can find the radius level of point A since we know the value of rise of the ground. We can formulate it as follows. Reduce level equals to previous reduce level plus rise of fall. It is equal to 10 meters plus 1 meters. The answer is 11 meters. Now we will see how to record the intermediate site reading in the field book. You have to put the intermediate site reading into the intersite column. Then you need to deduct the intersite reading from previous staff reading and put the value in either rise column or fall column. Since the reading is a plus value, you can put it in the rise column. Next, the radius level of the point A can be obtained by adding the rise value to the previous radius level like this. In the remarks column, you have to write the point name and the chain age. Next, we will move to 20 meter point along the AB line. We can rotate the telescope about the instrumental axis and get the height of 20 meter point referred to the same collimation line. Let's put these readings to previous formula. Change in the height of the ground is equal to previous staff reading minus considered staff reading. 1.5 meters minus 1.8 equals to minus 3 meters. If the answer is negative, that means there is a fall in the ground from point A to 20 meter point. So the reduce level at 20 meters along AB line is equal to previous reduce level plus rise of fall. The answer is 10.7 meters. Now we will see how the reading at 20 meter point is recorded. Since it's an intermediate site, you need to write the value in the intermediate site column. You can find rise of fall by deducting staff reading 1.8 meters from the previous staff reading 1.5 meters. The answer is minus 0.3 meters. You have to put that value in the fall column. Once you have added the fall value minus 0.3 meters to the previous radius level, you can have the radius level at 20 meters, which is 10.7 meters. Similarly, we can obtain the readings at 40 meters and 60 meters from the same instrument station. Readings up to 40 meters and 0 meters are called intermediate sites. The final reading taken from the instrument station is called foresight. If you carefully observe, you will notice that there is a fall of ground from 0 meters to 60 meters. From 0 meters to 20 meters, the fall is 0.3 meters. From 20 meters to 40 meters, the fall is 0.4 meters. From 40 meters to 60 meters, the fall is 0.8 meters. Sir, can't we use the 80 meter point as the foresight since we can observe the point from the same station? Why not? It's possible. But I personally don't like to take backside or foresight readings which are having the distances more than 50 meters from the instrument station. The reason is we cannot see the staff readings clearly and accurately when the distance from the instrument to the staff is more than 50 meters. I got it. Thank you. Not at all. Now we will carry on the remaining leveling work. Now we are going to change the instrument since we have already obtained the foresight reading. So this point is known as changing point. 
At changing points, the person who holds the staff should not change the position where the staff is, because it makes big errors in level if we change the staff position to different place where the ground is having a different level. This rule has to be strictly followed since we carry forward the level at 60 meters up to the benchmark too. Now they are changing the instrument station. Meanwhile, we will see how the readings at chain edges 40 meters and 60 meters are recorded. Since the reading at 40 meters point is an intermediate side, you have to record it in the interside column. As you calculated previously, you have to find the rise or fall value and calculate the reduced value at the 40 meters point. Next reading is very important since it is the last reading taken from this instrument station. Therefore, it should be recorded in the foresight column. Here you can find the rise or fall value by deducting the foresight reading 3 meters from the previous intersight reading 2.2 meters. The answer is minus 0.8 meters. Therefore, it should be recorded in the fall column. The reduce level at 60 meters can be calculated by adding the fall value to previous reduce level. Since this is a changing point, you need to write it in the remarks column. Now we will move to the new instrument station. Now the instrument has moved to a new station. Then we have to get the first reading to the staff at the changing point. Since it is the first reading from the new station, it is again a new backside. Since it is the first reading from the new instrument station, we have to record it in the backside column. Don't write it in the below row of the previous foresight reading since you have taken the backside reading to the same 60 meters point. Therefore, you need to record the backside reading in the row where the previous foresight reading was written. Then we can have an intermediate site as usual to the 80 meter point. Now you can deduct the considered staff reading 2.5 meters from previous staff reading 4 meters. The answer is plus 1.5 meters. The meaning of plus 1.5 is that there is a rise of 1.5 meters of the ground from 60 meter point to 80 meter point. Now we can obtain another intermediate site reading to point B at 100 meter mark and close the work by taking the foresight reading to the benchmark 2. Next as usual, you can record the reading at 80 meters and 100 meters point in the interside column and calculate the rise or fall value and reduce level like this. Then finally, you can close the level line by taking the foresight reading to the benchmark 2. You can record the final value in the foresight column and do the calculations accordingly. Sir, is it a must to close the level line from a benchmark? Of course, otherwise we cannot check the accuracy of the work. If we have done the leveling accurately, we should get the correct reduced level of the benchmark to after doing calculations. If you fail to obtain the actual reduced level at benchmark 2 by calculations, the difference between the actual reduced level and the calculated reduced level is the error. Sir, if there is an error, do we need to do the leveling exercise again? If the error is within the permissible range, you don't have to. But if it is more than the permissible error, you have to go back to the field. Wow, it's like a game. Exactly, if you do mistakes, you will lose your valuable time. But don't worry, you can learn a lot by mistakes. Now we'll see how the relevant checks are being done to check both the accuracy of calculations and the accuracy of leveling work. There is an arithmetic check 
to find the accuracy of the calculations. For that, you need to find the summation of backside values, foresight values, rise values, and fall values. If the calculations are correct, the difference between the summation of backside values and the summation of foresight values should be equal to the difference between the summation of rise values and the summation of fall values. In this example, the both values are same. Therefore, the calculations are ok. Accuracy of the leveling work depends on the difference between actual reduced level of the closing point and the calculated reduced level of the closing point. In this example, the difference is zero. Therefore, there is no leveling error. If there is an error, we need to distribute it. Now using these reduced levels, we can draw the longitudinal section drawing as follows. The longitudinal section shows how the existing ground level varies with the chain age. In the same drawing, you can draw the design profile between point A and B. Once you draw both profiles in the same drawing, you can have an idea about cut heights and fill heights. Further, you can calculate cut volumes and fill volumes by doing area volume calculations. We can learn area volume calculations thoroughly in areas and volumes lesson. Sir, I want to know how the terms backside, foresight and intersight have been originated. Entire leveling work is carried out in a given direction. In this example, it is from A to B. So, it is the forward direction. Therefore, first reading we obtain by looking at the backward direction is known as the backside. Further, farmer's reading in the forward direction is known as the foresight. So, all the readings between backside and foresight automatically becomes intermediate sides. Thank you for explaining. Now we know how to do leveling using rise and fall method. Yes, you learned a lot today. Next day, we will see how the same exercise can be done using height of collimation method. Bye. 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 Thank you very much for watching this video. Coming up next is leveling part 3. Don't forget to subscribe this channel for more of the very latest videos.